So the hypercar class in Le Mans Ultimate can look complicated at first glance. Virtual energy, fuel, battery charge, it can all seem a little overwhelming. But today, I'm going to show you how to use it in the simplest way possible. So here's what we'll cover. First I'll explain the virtual energy system, then the hybrid battery system, then I'll give you some important tips when driving the hypercars, followed by some example scenarios in the game itself. So what exactly is the virtual energy in Le Mans Ultimate? Well the most important thing to remember is that virtual energy is not a real physical substance like fuel, but rather an imaginary value put in place to force cars to pit stop within a reasonable time. The simplest way to understand virtual energy is that you should be treating it like it's your fuel when driving a hypercar. Your virtual energy is represented by this blue bar in the bottom right of your screen, and it empties as you drive around the track during a race. A full bar usually lasts around 40 to 50 minutes, depending on the track that you're driving on. It's important to note here that you cannot allow this bar to reach zero during a race. Doing so will cause you to get a stop and go penalty. You can refill your virtual energy bar during a pit stop just like you would do with your car's fuel. The easiest way to look at virtual energy and fuel as a beginner is that you should just make sure that they're the same amount when you start a race. For example, at Bahrain, a full bar of virtual energy lasts about 27 laps, so you should put about 27 laps worth of fuel in the car so that they run out at about the same time before you need to pit. I'll explain an easy way to calculate this later in the video. Next let's talk about the hybrid battery system and what it does in a hypercar. Basically the hybrid battery system improves the car's fuel and braking efficiency during a race. What the hybrid system does is it takes some of the responsibility of outputting the car's power instead of all of it coming from the engine. Now these numbers are just an example, but just imagine a hypercar puts out say 500 horsepower. The hybrid system would be responsible for outputting up to 50 of that horsepower depending on how high you've set its deployment level, which then allows the car's engine to only be responsible for the remaining 450 horsepower. What this means is that your car uses less fuel per lap, which allows you to carry less fuel in the tank. Less fuel means less weight, which means faster laps and fewer and shorter pit stops in a long race. The most important thing to remember here though is that the car's hybrid system does not make your car run faster. Remember, it's not adding horsepower to your car like say a Formula 1 car's hybrid battery system does. It simply helps your car use less fuel per lap. Now let's talk about how the hybrid battery charges and how that improves your car's braking. Your car's battery level is represented by this blue bar with a battery symbol next to it in the bottom right of your screen. As you drive the car around the track, your battery bar will start to empty. You'll know when your battery is depleting when the battery icon here turns blue with downward arrows inside of it. Now the different hypercars deploy their batteries in different ways, which I'll explain later. But the easy way to understand it for now is that whenever you're applying throttle, the battery will start to empty. Alternatively, whenever you hit the brakes on a hypercar, this will charge the battery. You'll know when your battery is charging when the battery icon turns green and with upward arrows inside of it. The only way to charge your battery is through braking. Pit stops will not recharge your battery. Now whenever the battery is charging, extra braking force is applied to the car, which allows you to brake later and harder for corners. If your battery reaches 100%, it will immediately stop charging. This also means that you will instantly lose all of that extra braking force. This is important to remember, because it's never a good idea to allow your battery to reach 100% during a race. These hypercar's brake bias has been tuned to account for the extra braking force that you get during the battery charging process. So what this means is that if your battery reaches 100%, it won't charge during the braking process and will cause your car's brake bias to become incorrect in that exact moment, giving the car a high chance to snap and spin. Now if you're in a situation where you're approaching a corner and your battery level is at 100% or close to it, simply brake earlier and softer for the corner to reduce the chance of the car spinning. It's important to manage your battery level so that it doesn't reach 0 or 100% and I'll explain how we do that next. So when it comes to managing our battery, we have two options we can set. First we have the motor map function, which allows us to control how much battery is deployed whilst we're on the throttle. Then we have our battery recharge rate, which controls how much battery is charged when we hit the brakes. Both of these functions have keybinds attached to them in the options menu, but you can also alter both of them using your in-game MFD if you don't have any spare buttons to bind them to. Now we'll start with the battery charge rate because it's the simplest. 
Basically, you'll always want this to be at the maximum level during a race. This is because the higher it is, the more battery you'll recharge during the braking process. And a stronger recharge rate means even more extra braking force. So having this value at the maximum will allow you to brake as late as possible which somewhat helps you improve your pace around the track. The common practice here is to have the recharge rate at the default value for the first lap of a race to let the battery deplete a bit, then bump it up to the highest value after that and keep it there for the remainder of the race. This allows us to get away from that dangerous 100% battery level sooner so that we can start braking as hard as we can as soon as possible. Now the motor map allows us to control just how much battery power is being drained while we're on the throttle. You won't change this as much as you think, because remember that the hybrid system in a hypercar doesn't improve its power. What we use this function for is to make sure that we keep our battery level balanced so that it doesn't reach either 100% or 0%. Again, reaching 100% puts the car in danger of spinning during the braking process and reaching zero causes the car's engine to then become responsible for outputting all of its power, which can significantly increase fuel consumption. The changes we make to this function are usually only minor. All you need to do is keep an eye on your battery level every two laps or so. If you see the battery is starting to reach zero too often, turn the motor map down one or two clicks and this will help bring its level back up. If you see the battery starting to get too close to 100%, turn the motor map up one or two clicks to help it drain a bit faster. Now in a shorter sprint race, this kind of battery management isn't so important because the race probably isn't going to go long enough for that to make an impact. But in longer 4, 6 or even 24 hour races, which is what these cars are designed for, Managing the battery well can mean the difference between you having to make 8 pit stops compared to 10 pit stops during a race. Pit stops are a long process which costs you a lot of time, and so the longer that you manage to stay out on the track rather than in the pits, the better result you'll get in a race. So make a habit of just keeping an eye on your battery level every couple of laps and make those minor adjustments so that you can ensure there's always some battery available. And now that's the fundamentals of how a hypercar works and how to manage its battery. Again, it's not complicated, just keep an eye on your battery every couple of laps and always pit stop before your virtual energy bar reaches zero and you're ready to start racing. But if you want to go a little more in depth, I'll share some other useful tips to help give you a better understanding of these cars. Let's take a quick look at the different hypercars and how they differ in terms of battery function. I've put them into three groups. First, we have the Ferrari 499, Toyota GR010 and Peugeot 9X8. Now these cars start off using only the engine and will only deploy battery once they've reached a certain speed. For example, the Peugeot will deploy battery once it reaches 150 km per hour and above. They're fairly straightforward to drive, the only thing you have to make note is that because the battery is not draining as often, you're more likely to be at risk of reaching 100% charge, so keep an eye on those battery levels and change the motor map accordingly. Next we have the Porsche 963 and Cadillac V Series R. Now these cars are always deploying battery whenever you're on the throttle, and they actually start up in electric mode and then switch over to the engine with what's referred to as a bump start. This is important to remember because it means if you're going to be doing a pit stop soon, you must make sure you have at least 5% battery available before you park your car in the pits. If you don't have at least 5% battery available, then you won't be able to start the car again and your race will be over. So always keep an eye on your battery level and make sure you're keeping your battery high enough before entering the pit stop. Then last we have the Van Wall Vandeville and the Glickenhaus SCG. These cars are unique because they don't use a hybrid system at all, meaning they don't require battery management. This however means that they need to carry a lot more fuel, which means more weight and often results in extra pit stops during a long race compared to the other hypercars. Next is the complaint I get from a lot of people that the hypercars are just too hard to drive when the tyres are cold, and the fix for this is fairly easy. Whenever I've just come out of the pits and my tyres are cold, I just turn the in-car traction control to 10. This will make applying throttle on the car easy during the cold period, and then you can just turn it down slowly as the tyres get up to temperature. In fact, as a beginner, I'd actually recommend that you use a higher TC value like 9 or 10 most of the time during a race to give you some confidence when you're learning these cars. Then turn it down slowly as you become more comfortable. Now finally, I'll show you an easy way to decide on how much fuel and virtual energy you'll need for a race. Now on our Discord, we have a fuel calculator bot that we'll need later, and I'll leave a link for this in the description. First off, a bit of planning will help you here. Enter a practice session using the track and car that you'll be racing with. Now here in the car's advanced setup menu under powertrain, we can control how much virtual energy as well as fuel we put into the car, which is controlled by this fuel ratio slider. 
To figure out how many laps a virtual fuel energy bar will give you, simply drive around the track for about 10 laps. Then on the last lap, open your MFD and navigate to the pit stop menu. Make sure that the virtual energy is set to 100% and then in brackets you'll see an accurate estimate of how many laps a full bar will give you. For example, here we see that a full bar will last 27 laps at Bahrain. Now that we have this value, figuring out how much fuel we need for the race is easy. For example, in the Toyota, I've rounded our fuel usage up to 3.4 litres per lap. So I just multiplied 27 by 3.4, which gives me roughly 92 litres. And this is how much fuel I put in the car's tank for one stint in a long race. Now let's get our fuel calculator bot open to figure out how much fuel we need for an entire race. For short races under 40 minutes and the qualifying sessions, it's fairly easy. Here we always set our virtual energy to 100. Remember that the virtual energy is not a real material thing, meaning that it's not going to add any weight to your car. To find out our fuel for qualifying, we just multiply our fuel per lap by how many qualifying laps we want to do. So if you want to do 4 laps, we simply multiply 3.4 by 4, which gives us 14 litres. Now say we have a 40 minute race. Simply fill in the required information with your race length, fuel per lap and lap times, then put one or two extra laps in the bottom field to be safe. Hit done and then the calculator will tell you exactly how much fuel to add. Now in longer races, for example this 2 hour 40 minute race at Bahrain, here's how we work out our pit stop strategy. First we enter all the fields with the same details but making sure race length is set to 2 hours 40 minutes. You can see here the calculator shows we'll be doing 91 laps in the race. I make it 92 to account for the extra lap if that happens. All I need to do now is divide the total amount of laps by 27, which is the amount of laps a full bar of virtual energy lasts. This gives me 3.4, which tells me I'll be doing 3 stints with a full virtual energy bar and 92 litres of fuel. It also tells me I'll be doing a fourth final stint that won't require a full tank or virtual energy bar. To find out how much we need for the final stint, First I multiply 27 by 3 which gives me 81. Then I subtract this from the total amount of 92 laps, giving me 11. This tells me that the final stint will last 11 laps. I then multiply this by our fuel per lap of 3.4 which tells me I need 38 litres of fuel for the final stint. Now virtual energy takes time in the pit to refuel even though it's not a physical thing. It fills up at the same time as fuel so you don't have to worry too much about the exact amount. So if a full bar of virtual energy lasts me 27 laps, then I'd say 11 laps would be roughly 45%. And now we have a very basic and safe strategy for the entire race, which I'll recap here. We start the race with 100% virtual energy and 92 litres of fuel. Then on our first pit stop, we fill virtual energy to 100% and 92 litres of fuel. Then on our second pit stop, we do the exact same. Then on our final pit stop, we'll fill the virtual energy to 45% and the fuel tank to 38 litres. When it comes to tyre choice with hypercars, you generally always want to use softs and change them every pit stop if the race is under 4 hours. Mediums and hard tyres can be good for doing double or triple stints in races longer than that, although they have significantly less grip, so choose accordingly. Well that covers everything guys, and I really hope that this video gives you the confidence to try this incredibly fun car class in Le Mans Ultimate. Like I said earlier, the battery itself isn't a complicated thing. Just keep an eye on its level and move your motor map up or down to keep it in check. And when it comes to virtual fuel, just make sure you perform a pit stop before the bar reaches zero and you won't have any issues. If you've got any more questions about the hypercar class in Le Mans Ultimate, just leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. So as always, thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.